Hello everyone and welcome back to the Krusty Krab where we are going to cover every single Material UI component and in today's video we are probably covering the most used Material UI component. Although it is the most used, it is probably one of the most simple ones and we're just going to go over all the examples so that you guys understand it. And if you find value in this video, don't forget to send it to someone. Leave it in the comments if you have any ideas and if you want to help out with the algorithm and also make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about Material UI and React. So the button component is pretty self-explanatory. It is just a component that replaces the basic button that you can find in HTML. There are three different variants of the button component as you can see down here. You can either have the default variant, which is the text variant, and this one's sort of interesting because I know I see a lot of people use it for the first time and they think that they might not be using the component properly. But yes, the text variant of the button, which is the default button, um, doesn't look like it has much of a border or is much of a button at all and it if you were to hover over it you can see that it has that little nice ripple effect and um, it also has a little shadow I personally think that maybe the contain or the outline button should be the default one in most of my applications I prefer the outline one I just think it looks super clean um, but anyways these are the three different variants contain will just have a completely filled in background um, and uh, text inside of it and then the outline one looks just like the text except it has a nice little border around it to let everyone know that yes this is actually a button and not just some random text that if you happen to hover over will show a background now they give you a bit more examples over here so the only notable thing here um, is two other props you can use number one is called the disabled prop if you pass the disabled prop in a button will be disabled of course this is great for times when for example the user clicks a button and you might load something on the back end and you want the user to wait and not click it again you can keep track of that state whether or not they've clicked it already and just simply make the button disabled for the time being the next one is the link button where you could just pass in an href to wherever it is that you want the user to go to and it will act just like an a tag um, in HTML with an href component inside of it and it will just take them to wherever they click on it. You can also pass in um, the target um, if you're familiar, familiar with the target prop for regular HTML. If you want a tab to open up in a, a link to open up in a new tab you can put um, target equals underscore blank and that'll make it so that if they click this um, it'll actually actually go ahead and just open the page up in a new tab for the user so all that cool stuff is still within the button now they just have the exact same examples with the contain button uh, which I don't think we need to go into it's the exact same examples except the button looks different um, you can also remove the buttons elevation uh, with the disable elevation prop and all that does is sort of uh, remove a bit of like I guess CSS to make the button look like it's a bit high off the the page um, and, and just give it a bit more uh, a bit less prominence um, on the page and of course the outline button uh, which is the exact same examples as well so handle and clicks is going to work the exact same way as it works in HTML you're just going to pass in your on click handler um, and then just do what you want you can make this a custom function you can make this a function within the on click itself um, you know nothing outside the standard react ecosystem now we have color um, if you're familiar with material UI components you know that material UI automatically injects a theme into every single one of its components if you haven't done uh, an overwrite of that theme and the default coloring for the theme um, the color prop by default is going to be set to primary and that primary from material UI is going to be this bluish color now of course you can access any other color uh, from the theme um, for example if you pass in color equals secondary it'll make the button revolve around the secondary color which is a sort of purpley pink and then of course you have the uh, success color and the uh, error color which is going to be sort of red and a couple of other standard material UI stock colors that come with uh, the baseline theme um, so just know that the color prop can go ahead and control just the overall color of any of these buttons and you know for example you can also combine that with the uh, the variant to make um, the button look different. So for example, this error looks sort of cool uh, because the variant is outlined, but if you were to make the variant contained, it would be sort of like this success button except all red um, as well. And of course, if you want to pass in text, uh, which I didn't talk about yet, you just pass it in uh, through the children um, within the button tags, just like a regular button. Material UI also gives you a sizes prop. That sizes prop by default, I believe, is set to medium, but you can also set it to small and large. The big difference here is the text and a tiny bit of padding in between the text and the um, actual borders of the button itself. So good to know if you have an application where you need to just quickly uh, use some stock styles. But a lot of the times if you are working for a company, for example, and they're providing you with a UX design, you're uh, just going to 
be doing the sizes based off what they tell you anyway, so you're probably gonna have to customize them yourself. Um, now they give you a couple of different esoteric examples. For example, one of them shows you how to wrap it in a label and pass in the Material UI input component that allows you to um, upload a file, for example, with the button. And I recommend, you know, if you wanted to check that out, um, you can go and look at this example. But essentially, it has more to do with the input component than anything else. Um, and if you want it, I believe there's uh, the input component. Um, let's see if I were to go ahead and go to the API and maybe change that to input. Um, you can see here that, and I'll link this in the description, but the input component has its own sort of uh, props you can pass in, but the button will work natively with that input component. As you can see, they just have a label component, and then inside of there, they have the input, which uh, they specifically say it accepts image files. They give it an input ID, and they also um, allow the user to select multiple, and they specify what type of input the user can be allowed to do, so that when you click this button, it will automatically go ahead and trigger that input. Um, and they also have it with the icon and we'll get to the icons in just a second But talking about icons with them inside of the buttons There are two cool props you can pass in number one is the start icon prop and number one is the end icon prop And if you're not familiar with the material UI icons I have a whole video on that I'll link it in the description as well But essentially all you have to do is pass in the icon that you want into the actual um, icon prop uh, the start icon or end icon prop depending on where you actually want that icon the next thing I talk about is the icon button. Now, I talked about this icon button component entirely in the icon video because, in my opinion, I think it belongs in the icon uh, part of the documentation and not the button part of the documentation. But just to give you a quick rundown, essentially all it is is, in Material UI, you can have over hundreds and hundreds of different icons. And this icon button is essentially just a wrapper you can use around an icon component to sort of give it that circle-y uh, border around it when you hover over it and that clicky feel. If you weren't if you didn't pass in this icon button, you just pass in the icon, um, there would be no like ripple effect when you click on the actual icon itself, and there would be no border when you hover over it. So it essentially just makes it so that if you have an icon and you want to make it feel a bit more buttony to the user, you wrap it around this icon uh, button prop. And they also have you know props like size and color for the icon component. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the loading button. So this one's new to Material UI v5, and I've tried this out, and I found it to be pretty cool. Um, if you want to use this, you don't use it from the standard Material UI library. It comes from something called the MUI lab, and this you have to MPMI on your own. Um, this is sort of like Material UI's beta component uh, repository. And then in Material UI 6, it'll probably get moved from lab to the actual component. But essentially, all it is is a button that once you click it, um, it has a state variable called loading, and if loading is true, um, it will just show sort of a loading animation inside of the component itself. So you can see, for example, if I were to click, you know, fetch data or whatever, it would, uh, you know, either give like a text or you can uh, modify a prop if there are any icons inside of the button, it will sort of have this sort of loading spinner and replace that icon with it. So pretty cool component. Uh, great if you actually are doing some stateful stuff, like for example, if you're doing Web3 stuff and you wanna connect the user's wallet or you wanna mint something, and you know, that might take 40 seconds depending on uh, the smart chain, uh, the blockchain that they're using and the smart contract speed. Um, you know, it's a nice way to show the user that something actually is going on and not just completely disable the button as a whole. And then of course, they just have some examples on how to style the buttons. But the one thing I did want to talk about when it comes to the actual button props is going to be uh, the SX prop that is found within the buttons and within everything else. If you are not familiar with the Material UI, this SX prop is essentially just a prop that allows you to pass in CSS into the component without having to use like use styles or styled components. So if you did have to change just for example the width or the height of the button, you could just go ahead and declare that in the SX prop. And if you're not sure how to do that, I have a whole video on the SX prop in the description below and you can just watch the first initial example because it should be enough to just give you an idea of how to use it. And that's pretty much it for the button. It's one of the simpler components and if you found value, make sure you leave a comment. It helps a lot with the algorithm and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more reactive material UI content and I'll see you guys in the next video.